Hello, everybody. Welcome or welcome back to another episode of Money Mondays. I am your host and creator, Alexis Malord. If you are new here, Money Mondays is a platform that I created to be a source of all types of information uh, to enhance your life, whether you are a consumer or an entrepreneur like myself. And without further ado, we have a lovely divorce attorney all the way from Miami, Florida, Miss Anna Fernandez. Hi, Anna. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you so much, Alexis, for having me. You look so beautiful today. Like, I tried, but this is what you got. Period is always up, so that's great. That's what's important, right? Thank you. So, Anna, can you please um, introduce us? Tell us a little bit about you and what it is that you do. So, my name is Anna Fernandez. I am an attorney in Miami, Florida, and now with Zoom, the beauty and benefit of Zoom, we're now expanding throughout Florida. So, uh, by having a license in law in Florida, I could practice here. And I could also practice federal, but I don't do too much immigration. I'm more focused on family issues and also business. I do a lot of contracts and enforcement and uh, defending cases. Nice. Yeah, sounds very interesting, actually. So, Anna, i like to dive into a little bit of your early life. Um, your parents both come from countries outside of the U.S. Can you tell us what that was like for you growing up and what that had um, shaping you to do with your finances? Of course. Well, so just a background for Dad, he came to Miami when he was probably five. But he was born in Cuba. And he came from a family that was always disciplined and work and, you know, with the mentality that you have to work, work to, to make a good living, provide to your family, um, you know. And when they came over here, it was more of a scarce mentality just because given that situation, they came here with nothing. So it was um, their mentality and the way that it's affected, I guess, the way that I've uh, grown up and the way that I am is I have that mentality that there's, there's a lack of, a, of abundance. Like, you know, there has, you have to save money, you have to save, and you do though, you definitely have to save money, but like it, that there's not enough to go out there. And I think that's what's important to know, especially as either an employee or an employer and entrepreneur, that you shouldn't be so much chasing um, and trying to store the money, but actually trying to use it in resourceful ways, um, you know, hiring people that can help you develop something that can help other people. So, um, I, and there is an abundance of this, it's out there. So it's it's more over um, collaboration versus competition. And that's what I think is the biggest impact that I've had um, until recently, actually. So, and now things are better. So <laughs> that's pretty, you know, I think I'm in the right direction. Yeah, isn't that a great feeling to overcome something and feel like you're finally um, on the right path to whatever your goals are? Oh, yeah, definitely. And just like you. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, just like you, you know, you have to set your mind and then try to get those goals. And it's not just about checking off the goals, but also the process in between. Yeah, the, it's the journey that really makes the person. Yeah, definitely. Anna, are you the only child? No, there's four of us in okay. total, same parents. And how yeah. do you say that your experience growing up differs or is the same than your siblings? In the sense of, are we talking money? Are we? What are we talking? Because there's a lot in the same and a lot. Yeah, it's uh, it's different, I guess. Um, well, let's dissect the money aspect of it first. So as far as money goes, um, I think they're kind of the same, but their professions are also very different. And it's beautiful because I think each and every one of my siblings, no, for sure, each and every one of my siblings is devoted to some sort of public help, like assistance. Uh, my sister's a teacher. Uh, my brother's a firefighter my younger brother. And then my older brother is a code enforcer for the city of Miami. 
So it's like somehow related to government or like, you know, helping people and the whole running of a city type thing, uh, helping and education. So I guess in the money sense, uh, yes, always it, it's more of planning and saving for money. So yeah, we were all raised with that mentality, but as a, I'm the only one that is trying you know, in an entrepreneur and running a business. So it's so different. Um, the mentality, because with their mentality, they're, they're, it's, they're on the right track. They're, you know, working for either the city or in education, either getting a, a pension or getting a good, you know, teachers don't make much and that's just what it is. But at the end of the day, it's fulfilling and she's, she's learned to save and she's also a teacher. So, um, but I guess, yeah, we've, it's the same type of mentality and it's been okay with them. It's, it has not been okay with me. Like I need a growth mindset to be able to grow something. Nice. What made you get into law, decide to go into that field? Well, I've always known I've wanted to be a lawyer. My dad was, my dad is a lawyer. Uh, my grandfather was a lawyer in Cuba and then he was a lawyer when he came here. That's why strong work ethics is what really, you know, has been imprinted in me since a child. Uh, which is very important. Um, so I kind of followed their footsteps. I liked the idea. I never thought I would be a family lawyer, though. I always thought uh, I would never do divorces. I wanted to stay away from it. But that's what I love to do now. So it's interesting. Um, I guess I got it from my father. Yeah. And then um, and family. So we're breaking up just a little bit there. Can you repeat what you said last? You got it from your father and yeah, it runs in the family. It runs I guess. The family. Yeah, yeah, that's be that's actually a beautiful thing. I don't have that in my family because my mom is a nurse. So, and I knew from very young on that nursing just wasn't for me. But does it give you a sense of pride to kind of um, continue on the family legacy, if you will? Oh, without a doubt, for sure, and I love that we can bond in that, on that level. Um, and that's one thing, yeah, you know, we all love each other, my siblings are awesome. It, we grew up in a weird family where we all got along. And I know that that's not the case in <laughs> the average family, sure. but um, I could say that that's one thing that separates me from them, which I think is, is pretty cool. Okay, and I have a list of questions for you here. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> What advice would you have for younger generations um, coming up, let's say, in the field of law like you are? I think you should start networking immediately. And by networking, I mean reaching out to people. Don't be afraid if they're not going to be nice to you, because if they're not nice to you, then don't. that's the person you don't want to talk to. You don't want to like seek them as a mentor in the first place, mm -hmm. but you'll be very surprised. There are so many, and especially women, I'm sorry, I have to throw it out there, but you, if you're a woman, reach out to another woman that is in what you want to do. And chances, I think you will have a, a high, a high success rate in, in return calls just because it's just something within us. And again, if it's, if it's a person that's either rude or, you know, Give it time, of course, before busy, but if they're rude to you, then just don't get upset about it and, and move forward because you don't want to work with them anyways, you know? But definitely reach out. Reach out, collaborations, um, you know, even even to like, hey, can I shadow you? Like, I've had people shadow me before, um, which is also cool for the person that's like getting the, the message, you know? Of course, I'd love uh, for people. So, yes. If you're watching this and you want to be a lawyer, reach out to me. I'd love, I'd love to like provide some sort of value. That's for sure. Beautiful, Anna. Yes, women empowerment. I'm all for that. Um, so let's get into a little bit of your business. 2020 took the world by storm. We all know. How has the pandemic affected your business or divorces? Okay, so yeah, two very good questions and two very different questions because. Yes, a lot of couples were together and, but yes. So I started getting a lot of divorces, but it, it was more, I was getting more parents 
calling in, saying, hey, they're not uh, obeying the schedule. Um, they're, they don't want to hand them over and the whole COVID and then the quarantine and, and more family, like parent disputes versus divorces. The divorces I did get, though, a lot of them were the easy, quick, in and out. We just want a divorce. We're not fighting. And that is really the best type of divorce because uh, everyone's happy. You know, you walk <laughs> away, it's not that expensive. It's very efficient. I, ha I got three people divorced the first week of quarantine. And I mean, it, not every case is the same, but it was like from the start to the end that same week. And they, the, it's not me really. I mean, I know the process. But the courts, the family courts, they were they just adapted so quick. So my profession adapted. Immigration and criminal is different. They are still having issues because a lot of their, you know, to be able to give someone a trial, some in some cases you're entitled to a jury, and there's no jury. I mean, they, I think they had like a a test run. And it was virtual, but voir dire, which is like picking the, the jury when you like can ask them questions, that has to be through virtual. And that's not really, I think most families can agree it's not the same. So it's not, you said it's not the same. What's not the same? You're going in. Uh, picking a jury, like, so what's really changed in, in going back to your question of like, how has it changed the legal profession? Anything that's civil or family related. Um, traffic as well is also done through Zoom. So it's actually really, I love it. I love that sense of it. What the downside though is you have people that are in jail and have not been able to get out because they can't have a trial by jury. Um, that's a big problem. And it's, it's really like the courts are trying to manage and they're trying the best that they can and they are, but it's not an easy situation. And a lot of medical malpractice cases, the same. Any case that has to have a jury mm -hmm. has been affected by it. Okay, so they haven't figured out how to get the jury by Zoom. Or, and do you think they will have something figured out by this year? Well, yeah, they, they've they tried it, but it's, again, it's not really the same. Because they'll have a, they, first of all, I think, like, there has to be a limited amount of trials going on at, at that time. So it could be only a few, and the voir dire, when you actually get to choose your jury, it cannot be in person. So you don't see, like, the mannerisms of the people, the, you know, the remarks. It's not as sincere, and you want that. Like, as a lawyer, and the, if you're sitting in jail, you want to be able to ha see the people that are going to choose, you know, what can happen with with your life. It's, you know, and, and that's... um. That's it's tough because that's the only thing that's in video. And then everything else is kind of like, you know, spaced out. But picking your jury, that's that's the, the big one. I so, see. yeah. And how how has it affected your business personally? Has it gotten better? Like you've experienced a boom? Has it been a little platform? It's been positive on my end. And it's been positive on the clients end too because it's cheaper for them. You don't have to pay for like unnecessary, you know, some some attorneys charge for the travel time and for sitting and waiting. And that's, I mean, those are things you could charge for because you're sitting and waiting at a hearing. Now judges are, they call you on Zoom and it's great because what would have taken you an hour would take you 10 minutes, 15 minutes. So it's, it's a plus on that end for clients. Very efficient for attorneys. Some attorneys are still meeting in person, um, but my clients are okay with Zoom. And if they want to meet in person, we make it available as well. But uh, like a, you know, we have to make sure no one's in the build or on our floor and that sort of thing. Okay, I hear you mention expenses twice. What makes a divorce so expensive? You always hear the divorces are more expensive than actually getting married. <laughs> Yeah, that's really sad because, well, first of all, yes, that's really funny. It's I think it's the first time I hear that, like, phrase well put. I should even quote that, like, divorce is more expensive than a marriage <laughs> or, like, than the actual ceremony, right? Yeah. But unfortunately, it is at some point, and people don't realize that sometimes you're fighting for nothing. Like, you're literally paying your lawyer to fight for something that you just can't let go of and, 
you know, if you have a good attorney, we have really good attorneys in, in Miami, but, and you know, if you have a good attorney, you do your research and you get a good one, they will tell you what is the probability and what is really worth fighting for. Your kids are absolutely worth fighting for without a doubt. If you're fighting for like a piece of furniture that is something that you could easily replace, that is really unfortunate, but it happens. And it, to me, in my eyes, I would literally tell the client, that's not something I'm going to fight for you for because I'm not going to, that's, I personally think that's, um, that's not something that I, part of, part of my values, but again, it's okay. People sometimes want to fight for something like that. And that's what makes it expensive. You know, if you can't agree, pick your battles and, you know, it's, um, usually your kids should be number one. Mm -hmm. Be realistic with what you want with them and how often you want to see them. And then everything else should go from there. Obviously if there's like properties and more complex situations, it's, it's diff every case is different. But for the most part, if it's just a division of assets and like how are we going to spend time, is usually the best and then, and then you go from there. Have you ever had a case where uh, a couple went through divorce proceedings but then decided to stay together? I had a case once that they almost, maybe it was twice. One of them, they almost, and they didn't. And then at the day of the final hearing, it was uncontested. And going back to making the divorces expenses, uncontested are like the ones that are super quick. We could do them like starting, like, you know, it's, it's a very reasonable price, but they were uncontested. They were, you know, they tried to work it out then they couldn't so they worked it out on how they were going to separate those are like the real ideal people because they're they have that open mind to kind of like let's resolve this together um they, they cried in the final hearing like they cried like once they were divorced it was it was actually like impresionante it was like um it left an impact on me it was, and like they were like hugging and it was just like it was really yeah it was actually really um I don't know, emotional, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Then I, I, I want to say I may have had one, but I, I really can't. I really don't know. Maybe after they got divorced, they got back together. But you don't, you didn't follow up, so you don't know. Go ahead. I've done a prenup for somebody that was divorced. Then they got back together, and to get back together, like to get married, it, it was a prenup. Uh -huh. And it was like, gap in between and there was I think a kid in between which is why they did a, a prenup you know what I mean like if, if, if you have kids with the new marriage and the old marriage and you, you want to like kind of like the assets and uh, you know the financial side comes into play but um yeah that I have had but not like I haven't really done a divorce and then they come back to me okay that, that's interesting oh I lost my train of thought for a second. Uh, oh, prenups. You mentioned prenups. Do you recommend a prenup in every situation? Even Let's say even if a couple is not necessarily well off, but they do have plans in the future to grow. Do you recommend a prenup? Absolutely. Honestly, if you... Even if you don't have assets, but you have a job and you want to get married you don't even know if you want to look at that age who knows if you don't want to start a family it, like it really you don't know how it's going to go right. so you there are two things you cannot write off on prenup and we won't get like so into it but child support you can't okay. so you don't have to worry about that and everything else why not get a prenup because even if you start at the same level at least it's like put in writing of unless we put our names on something together, everything is mine that says Anna Fernandez and everything is yours, you know, that says Alexis. Like that's that's just it's okay. Yeah. It's, it's that. But not everybody they they think it's more so of, oh, you're going into this like with thoughts of getting divorced and but that's like so like you have to be more open minded because this is coming from both ends. You know, it's not just like the man or the you know versus the woman or vice versa. Um, I think just people just have to understand that you don't know if it's gonna last a month, a year, or whatever. We've seen it so frequent. Why not just get something in writing? And then you know what? You could always do a will that leads. Like if we're still married at the time that I die, I'm leaving all of my property to my wife. 
So it's really just protect yourself because you never know. And if it, you know, if the love is still there and you're mature about it, then you don't have to worry about anything, right? That's true. I was looking over, we have a, a question, but we just answered this. The question was, have you ever had a couple get far into the divorce seatings just they married? Yeah, so just going back to answer that, in that case, I think, I don't know if they if they still wanted to be together, but they really tried. Um, you know, the couple, when they got divorced, they were crying and, like, hugging. They really tried, and I, I don't know. But maybe I'll follow up with them. I'm going to write his name down. <laughs> the husband of my client. I remember that case so well just because it was, like, it was something that was out of the ordinary. <clears throat> it touched you. Yeah, I have a lasting impression. So, yeah. um, I have this question, right? Normally, you see that the husband in a marriage is the main breadwinner. However, what if the wife is the main breadwinner, pays all the bills, all the mortgage? I mean, like everything is for her, and she wants to get a divorce. But the only thing stopping her from getting a divorce is one: she feels like she's going to have to pay him um, alimony or pay him her some of her pension is he entitled to half of her pension okay so breaking it down if she would oh to answer the the pension question first because that's probably the easiest okay so if you want to have a prenup then pensions are by statute considered marital property at the end of divorces what gets divided is marital property so if that's considered marital property, then that's going to be divided. But what the amount that's going to be divided in half is from the date, the amount of money that was put in from the date of the marriage until the date of the separation. And you take that amount, if it was a hundred bucks, then you split it in half. And it's not you typically like it's not typically a hundred dollars. It's usually, you know, a lot more. <laughs> right. <laughs> but um, so, yeah, so pensions, if you don't have a prenup, or if you could also, as part of a settlement agreement, like, let's say, if I want to stay with the dogs, I'll give you half of my pension, like, without a fight. But just know that, you know, um, the pension thing is by statute. But, again, if you want to settle it and just finish and end things versus depending on how much you're spending on fees, attorney's fees, and how much is in that pension, you use that as leverage, um, even as the person that's receiving it, you could say, I could I could uh, waive my half if you give me the dogs. Mm -hmm. You know? So, actually, yeah, that, that's really the scenario. So, you can use it as leverage, or you, you that's one of the reasons why you get a prenup. And then, um, that was one of your questions. And then, one of your other questions had to do with Pay oh, so I don't know, it really all depends on how long you guys were married for. Um, but what you have to keep in mind that's important is that there has to be a need. So, like, let's say if you're asking for alimony, you actually need it. Like, you need help paying the bills. It's not like I just want money to go shopping and buy shoes and because I like to. But you actually, there's a need for it. And you know what, if your standard of living was to go out and buy shoes and also pay the bills, then you can ask for that too. Um, but depending on depending on the length of the marriage, you can ask for that while the divorce is pending. So it really, while the divorce is pending, you can ask for something that's called temporary support. Mm -hmm. It's also something you cannot write off in, an, in, a, in a prenup. That's the second thing. First is child support and then temporary support. And then if you are getting a divorce, but let's say it's a short-term marriage, you, you're not going to get um, long-term, you know, uh, either permanent alimony or, I mean, chances are you won't get alimony, but you could still ask for temporary support. And if you're, like, in between, like, graduating school and you're, like, getting back to school and you have a plan of how much you need and if he could, he or she could support you, um, they might give you something like bridge the gap. But it, again, it all depends on how long you were married for. So it doesn't guarantee that you have to pay alimony just because you're getting divorced. Right. 
there has to be a need and obviously the other person needs to be able to pay it. If the guy or girl is not someone, if you guys are making the same amount of income and are paying like, you know, each bills and whatnot, then there's no reason why one should ask for alimony because there may not be a need or, or there may not be the ability, there may be a need, but if the other person is not able to provide, then, you know, you're either asking for an unreasonable amount or there's no, there's no need for, or there's no ability to pay the alimony. So essentially without a prenup or, or a postnup, you can do postnups as well, right? Then there's, there's no way to just leave a person high and dry. It sounds so terrible, but. <laughs> well, um, again, it all depends on how long you were married for. And the let's, sad thing is. Let's say 30 years how, married. Okay, no. If it's 30 years and one, if we're using, and I apologize because in my last example, I didn't use like the breadwinner. If there is a breadwinner, then that means that there's someone, there's either a disparity of the income or there's someone that's making a lot more money versus the lifestyle. For 30 years, if you've had the same lifestyle, regardless of, you know, of what, you know, everyone's different. What I consider something like extravagant may not be what you consider something extravagant. So if it's just the lifestyle that that person has had, regardless of how extravagant it is, then that person, if if they can't live that lifestyle without the other, the other person's support, then they have a very good chance of getting some sort of alimony, maybe permanent. Um, but yeah, but of course, you, you cannot ask for more than what the person in the support can, can pay. Okay. I think I put off, but you just can't ask for more than what the other person can pay or give. Understood. Understood. Okay. Well, it's cheaper to keep her or him in this case. <laughs> I think that you, you should do what makes you happy. And if, if it's having the money that, that makes you happy, then it might be, you know, cheaper to keep her, I guess. Right. But if, or him. But honestly, there's nothing, there's, it's really a beautiful feeling to be able to be, like, it's just a feeling of free. I've been divorced, by the way. So I, I, oh. did, I did experience. I didn't know that. It's okay. We don't, we're not talking about that. I just <laughs> wanted to throw that out there. <laughs> She's like, nope. Next. <laughs> okay. Um, is Florida a state that recognizes common law marriages? Yeah. So we are not, but if you come from a state that is common law, then you can talk for divorce if you've lived here for six months. And we would recognize it as a uh, the common law state. Ah, okay. How come Florida isn't a common law? I really don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it never really, like, I don't know. I'll Google it. Okay. <laughs> Um, what is the adoption process for a spouse adopting their spouse's child? You broke up. I broke up. Okay. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Okay. What's the adoption process for a spouse adopting their spouse's child? Okay. So before you're able to file any type of adoption documents, you want to make sure that you have a case that's being filed concurrently, that you're trying to establish parental rights from the other person's, uh, terminate the other parent's rights to the child, right? Okay normal adoption process I know we're breaking up I hope you guys could still hear me but the I can still hear you okay so like the, the typical adoption is usually you know if the other person wants to voluntarily give up their rights that's that's the typical and easiest way of doing it because everyone signs an affidavit you have a petition to terminate parental rights that's your first step and you can file either 
I believe you have to file it separately, but it, I mean, I've done it together if you have consent, because you, you can kind of do it together. But if, if the other parent is not in agreement, don't file it together. And you would have to first terminate the parental rights before seeking adoption by a step parent. So adoption by a step parent is not, it's, it's very, very common. And the most common type of case of that is when everybody agrees that um, the other parent is giving up that right. And you sign, and it's another one that I have um, I've done for adoptions is when it's like a family member or a grandparent okay. that they're, they're just, you know, they 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 don't have their head straight. They know that their parent will take care of their child, so they, they sign off their rights to. That's another type of, of, um, of adoption that, that's typical. Unfortunately, I've also done the, the terminating rights on the other side representing that. It's not easy for, it's easy on, it's easier. Okay, it's not an easy situation, <laughs> but it's very, very, very difficult to terminate parental rights if the other person does not agree. I've been on that side where, you know, my client did not want to terminate his rights and it was a good case and, you know, the judges did exactly what they, what they needed to do, but it was very, very, very hard for the other side to do. Um, but that's a, that's a third method. And if the adoption, uh, if the, the spouse who necessarily would be terminating, if that spouse is deceased, how would that process go? Well, I actually, you had brought that up uh, yesterday, and I started the research. I'm not done, and I don't want to say, you know, um, Something that's incorrect about being verified, but I do know that it's the similar process. Obviously, there's no consent given, okay. but what you would file instead is uh, the death certificate. And there's a blog post that should be up, if not this week, the next week. So I'll share that with you so you can put it in the show notes. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Um, by the way, guys, um, Anna has her own YouTube channel and Instagram where she does give tips. You can find her, her Instagram and her YouTube name is actually on the screen at Legal Lotus. So be sure to go ahead and subscribe and follow Anna. Um, I think we covered this, but I'm going to mention it anyway. Division of assets in a divorce. So, you covered that, right? What's up with that? Um, How do they do it? Yeah. So, like, easy, normal case is what you mentioned, the 30, let's say 30 years of marriage, division of assets. The court will see what everything, like all the bank accounts, and unless the party intended to keep things separate, which typically, you know, a 30-year marriage is, you know, usually not the case. Everything is mixed. Um, the judge will just say half and half. That's the, that's what's, that's really what's looked at as the most fair, but that's where like if, if one party, for example, is asking for alimony, that's where you negotiate, you know, like I'll give you, you know, I have my half, I'll give you this portion if I don't have to pay you alimony. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't say let's say I, I don't wanna have to cancel my four oh one K and suffer this um, the consequences of of like the taxes of having to to cash in early because that is a consequence i'll give you the, the boat or i'll give you something of similar value if if you don't have to um you know if we don't quadro or divide my pension and so that's when you negotiate um yeah so you just negotiate the terms like you would in a real estate transaction <laughs> that's the first thing that came to mind yeah, and but so normally it's it's you divide it in half, and if there's something on that half that you want, then you can kind of negotiate it. Okay. And then if it uh, if there's an affair or like some sort of bad practice in the marriage, obviously Florida is a no fault state, so they're gonna divorce you regardless. It doesn't matter if you cheated. But when they divide the assets, if if you spent any money in furthering the divorce, I'm sorry, furthering the affair, in the sense of you traveled, uh, you bought lavish gifts, you bought a ring, you did X, Y, Z, you went to restaurants, 
and you then you would have what's called an argument for dissipation of assets and you would request support give me more of his half or her half because part of our whole was being spent on the out of out of marriage relationship okay it's yeah. a lot of technicalities that go into divorcing that's why you're a lawyer unless it's an easy divorce you know when it's and i say easy it's not easy because obviously like it's something you have to go to school and even school doesn't teach you like i literally have to learn you know and that's okay but if it's simple or in the sense of like you guys agree to everything there's no reason why you can't like look for resources to help you do it yourself because um those those divorces are a lot easier to digest say that last part again that those type of divorces the uncontested it's easier to digest in the sense that you could read a form or you can seek out help from the courts uh self-help or resources and like they'll give you the forms or you can purchase the forms type thing fill it out and get divorced but again i don't recommend that for anybody that um either has kids and can't agree to a schedule mm -hmm. or uh for you can't agree to, to like how you're going to divide the debt everything else so you could figure it out it's um but yes the technical things is it's not going to work if one part you guys are not on the same page got you this, that's funny. <laughs> You're getting yeah. a divorce, but you need to be in the same. <laughs> that's awesome, though. It's possible. It could happen. I'm telling you, it could happen. And sometimes it's strategic. You you just have to, like, you have to, you don't, it's sad, but yes, divorce are looked at as, you know, negative and fighting <clears throat> and war of the roses. At the end of the day, you know, sometimes it's better to be divorced. Sometimes it's better. Yeah, I call it peace of mind. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. Say that one more time. No, absolutely. Peace of mind. Peace of mind. It's definitely better. So, Anna, at our beginning of our conversation, you mentioned that you are seeking um, to develop yourself better in the terms of finances. So what are some things that you have gotten into? Are you into stocks or real estate investments, anything like that? Okay, well, actually not at this time, but I'm educating myself. And I've been listening to a lot of podcasts, books, audiobooks, taking courses. And I, right now, I did invest in some stocks when, when the stock, went down a bit i actually invested in zoom but i got out too early um uh, i think i'm not sure but it doesn't matter the stocks it depends i'm not an expert at that stuff um i defer to experts to that there's also really good free resources to be able to like figure out how stocks work it's not something i have a passion for unfortunately so i don't think i'm gonna i just try to like you know understand it to an extent but I trust a professional for that. Okay. Same with real estate. That's why I rather talk to someone like you and like, hey, how's the market? Is this a good time? Um, because I'm not really emotionally involved. Like, it just, just doesn't bring me passion. But what I am doing, I'm trying to get something working that's uh, like kind of automated. Just trying to be more automated to be able to save more time and then like, you know, in essence, make more money. Um, by kind of like, I guess, uh, figuring different ways to get things done without you having to like even press a button. Okay. So, um, that, that is a good method that is becoming very, uh, I think very common now with everything, you know, being digital and being able to like hire the, uh, freelancer and that sort of thing. Just being able to divide yourself and delegate yourself in ways that you know can really expand for for a reasonable price too, because you know it's it's not easy for everybody, but it's getting easier. That's for sure. Everything is on technology based now. Okay. Yeah, you can really take advantage of that. Like you know, self automate, uh, develop a system or procedure to make things just flow that you having to ma micromanage and that's what i'm working on now it's not easy but that's why i'm like a lot of books and just 
continuous education. Yes, so viewers who are watching, Anna actually provided us with a list of suggested books that she did, she did it really beautifully and really organized nicely by category. So if you're interested in um, seeing some of the books that she, Anna recommends, these are mental health, um, business and finance, all kinds of different books. I will be leaving that in the description of the video below. And let's go ahead and talk about mental health. So we know that that's important. Um, what are some of the practices you do when you're feeling stressed or any of the emotions that you feel that are typically considered a negative emotion? How do you get yourself out? So I'll be honest, I had a really, I was not good at managing stress probably like four years ago. It's always, every day is a learning process. But four years ago, I was bad. I realized it and it wasn't easy to realize either. A lot of people, you know, family members that love me told me, hey, you know, that's crazy. You're not really managing well. And I was, I was kind of like a the aha moment, I guess. And I got help. I see I still check in with a therapist, which I recommend that to anyone. It's if it's if you have insurance, see if it's covered under your insurance. Because sometimes it's it's good to to make sure that you're in check, and that's what I do once a month. I I have like a chat, and she actually my therapist he used to be a lawyer, so we spin off so many business ideas together when I meet with her, and that in itself is worth it. it and it's covered by my insurance. I mean, you know, with a minor copay, but I I get so much value out of just getting check, you know, checking in, making sure I'm mentally okay. I even ask you like. I got mad at, at this. Is that normal? Like, can you get mad? At this? But it, it helps my mental health because it, it's, again, it's a check-in. Um, but then I also, I learned through that and through reading that if you start developing good habits, that you could actually prevent a lot of the stress from even building up. And one of the things that I implemented over a year ago, it's, I think, going to be two years writing every morning like none, a lot of it does not make sense but i just write for i do three pages and it's not a big book either it's like a little notebook like something like this okay it could be whatever but i, I always make sure to include three things that i'm grateful for um how i want to feel today what i want to give today and what i want to receive today and then everything else is just like, I am so mad at blah, 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 blah. And everything that I just put it out. And then that's it. And I sometimes reread it just to see my progress. But I, you know, I got it out of my system. So that's one thing I do every day. And another thing I do every day, it's, a, it's all, all about habits, is um, I have to walk for an hour. Well, and that's what I sit every like I sit a lot, so with work, and I just go downstairs to my building and I walk for an hour, and then I do twenty minutes, thirty minutes of yoga every day. Nice. Okay. Yeah. How do you fit all that into your schedule? Aren't you extremely busy? Super. I do it, but you know what? It's important, so I do it like anything else. It's, as long as it's in my schedule, and if it's a habit that you do every single day at the same time every day then you're going to feel weird if you don't do it. And that's a point. Like, you want to – you need that drive because it's it's not easy. I don't do it because – I love it now. But, I I mean, I never liked uh, – I hate it. running. Was not, it's still not going to happen, the running. But <laughs> I was always like, why, you know. But now I, I really enjoy walking. Um, you could fit that in. You just – you do it at the same time every day. I usually do it at 5, but since we were meeting – I actually, I that. No, no, no. You got to adapt, which is exactly what I did. So at four o'clock, I did my walk, came back, and, you know, the same routine, but just like a little bit earlier. And, you know, it's adaptable, but establish a routine that of things that are good for you and that make you happy because, like, and those walks are like my favorite things now because I put on an audiobook. Uh, and that's you got to use that time also to like you know I'm also learning at that time so I am fitting in like an extra plus there, um, you know audiobooks and music, music too meditating I mean 
I would like to be done walking, actually, and yoga. And exercise is very important. So I would start there. That's wonderful. Okay, walking. My thing with just listening to you talk, because I'm slowly trying to implement these things into my um, my daily routine. My thing is staying consistent. Do you have a tip for me? <laughs> Stay consistent. So, well, the thing is, I would start to trying to do one thing first, because I'm I'm mentioning a lot, but I didn't learn how to do all of that at the same time. Yeah. That is just, and that, you know what, I'm so happy you asked that question because that's, a lot of people think that you see a successful person and it's like, this person is just successful because they're successful, but you don't see that like, and I'm, you just don't see that whole, this is a whole big picture. Like that person probably worked their butt off for, you know, or, or didn't, who knows, but they also, they did something that you don't really, you don't really know like the, the facts. So um, yeah, well, just like the one thing one thing and it's funny i with the, the hardest one for me was the journaling or like the writing it's just like i just don't have time for this like and but at the end of the day it only takes 10 minutes really and it does provide a lot of value because it's a lot of things i i have gone back to like highlight and like i wow but that was the hardest so the what you have to do is just tell yourself it's only once a day and you don't want to write, just write that. I don't feel like writing today. And have fill the page up saying, I don't feel like writing today. Mm. And like, if you get past that, you'll realize, okay, it was just 15 minutes of being uncomfortable. But it's, at the end of the day, the big picture, it helps you develop the other habits of, I'm going to walk every day now. Now I'm going to do this every day. Um, you know? So That's, that I recommend. I heard a, a quote that I think might be fitting earlier today. Um, practice makes progress instead of progression. Um, perfection. Practice makes progress. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I totally resonate with that. Like, it's because at the end, sometimes it's like they say, too, it's it's better done than perfect because it's it's a, it's a work in progress. It's not it isn't just, you know. Yes, there are those rare, rare, rare exceptions, you know, like, but I'm sure like Beethoven had to really practice his butt off to get to the level he got at, you know, but he's also a rare exception, but it, it is, you know, success and, and that, and that, you know, developing, um, just being successful in general is really just a lot of habits that just like that you did every day and just perfected it. Like you see in sports, which is, to me, it's fascinating. Like to see people doing something that they're really good at is is really cool. So, okay, I have just two more questions. Mm -hmm. What advice would you have? Because you mentioned reaching out, right? And um, my problem is that I'm shy, and I'm pretty sure there's other people out there who have the same problem as me. What advice would you give to that shy person who maybe? Uh, I don't know what the term would be, but they don't want to reach out because of whatever judgment they might feel that the other person would have. No, definitely. Like that, that's also, I'm happy you asked that question too, because it's also something that I struggled with in the beginning because it was more of like, you know, I, I have been, a, I'm kind of, sh like, I, it was more of like a shame, not shame, but like kind of like worse than what if they don't respond. Mm -hmm. like I said, if the people that don't respond, don't get upset because you don't know. It depends on how you're approaching them. Most people are doing this through email now. Not everybody checks their email. Sometimes emails go to spam. If you're at, if you're trying to talk to someone in their face and they're or ignoring you, that's going to hurt. But you don't want to work with someone like that. There are so many good people. Like, Alexis, look at this. Like, we just, I met you you know, through Marilyn doing like, you know, a year or two, I don't even remember how long ago, but like we have the, the same type of mindset and we're here to provide some sort of value. And of course I'm going to collaborate with you. Just reaching out to people like that, you know, and if, yes, it's, it sucks if they don't respond and they're an idol or, you know, or someone you really look up to, but there's, there's going to be people that, and if they're, they're happy at what they do and they want to, just spread it because again, there's so much abundance out there 
And there's nothing better than the feeling of like, you know, contributing to, to someone else's success too. Like as a, as an inter- entrepreneur and business person, or even employee watching a building, helping build a company. And all of that stuff is like, it, it has to excite you. And if it does, that means that you're, you're going in the right direction. And if it doesn't, then look into a profession or into something else, maybe a hobby, which is another, sorry, side note, another thing that is good for mental health is having a hobby. Um, that's another thing I developed. But yeah, just do something. Hobby? Oh, I, I actually, every Thursday, I volunteer at Fairchild Gardens it's in Pinecrest, and I pick weeds there, and I, I love it, and it's, it's, it's amazing. What is it called? Fair? Fair? It's Fairchild. It is amazing. It's 88 acres, 88 acres of uh, Florida preserved, uh, like pine trees. Okay. Um, that's my area. I, I pick weeds with uh, the groomers. That's what we call ourselves. And it's a bunch of, of you know, right now, yeah, it's, it's a group of us just because, you know, we're still keeping the social distance. And I think like the average age there is uh 60 so um you know we're like still we're still distancing ourselves but it's 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 awesome get a hobby um i guess going back to what we were saying like just you know find that excitement of trying to like contribute to either somebody their business or what you're doing so reach out send i send emails linkedin i wouldn't do so much Okay. Um, just because I, there, you have to have a presence. Some people, recruiters, do look at LinkedIn, but reaching out to LinkedIn itself, I'll be honest with you, I get so many messages, I don't check them anymore. I don't check Facebook either. But I've had people reach out to me, anybody that reaches out to me, my personal email, and really like looked into how do I contact this person because I could learn from her type thing. I will always respond with like either a phone call or when can I meet you or, you know, that's that type of thing because that also takes skill. And you, it's very easy to find people's information out, FYI. But not everybody knows that. So being resourceful is also a plus. And this point also like there's a lot of groups and like um, lots of like Facebook groups. Like, for example, I'm a part of like female lawyers you know group or women i'm actually a part of a lot of facebook divorce groups i don't not for solicitation but just to kind of like hear the questions of that people have so you know you could find people in that way a lot of like coaches attorneys and professionals set up groups like that so that you can connect with people on that level like how i want to find a mentor um i want to find uh you know marketing mentors there's a lot of marketing mentors now like with social media and that sort of thing so don't be afraid to reach out and don't be afraid to feel rejected it sucks it sucks it happens it's happened to me a million times probably (laughs) you know but it happens and and that's why you shouldn't get so worked up about it unless it's a family member then that's when i kind of take it personal (laughs) Every no leads you closer to that yes. Absolutely. Okay, our last question. Is there a piece of advice that you might have received that has stuck with you? Oh, that's that's a good question. But at this point in my life, I think the advice that has, I guess, been very applicable at this time is that, you know, kind of mentality of, don't let it get to you, you know, putting, you have to put yourself out there because if you don't, then you're not going to grow as a person. If you don't grow as a person, you're, it's, it's just sad. It's, it's sad because you're not going to enjoy life as much as you will. Like, I know that I'm not there yet, but I'm getting him. And that's really what's like kind of stuck to me that this is super uncomfortable, but this is something that I have to go through to get to my next level. Like, Super Mario, like I'm talking, you know, you want to get to the next level in the game, you got to go through it as much as this level may suck and the castle sucks, you get through it and you grow. So um, swallow that, you know, it sucks to be vulnerable because that's that's how you feel when you put yourself out there. 
but it's it's the courage of, of getting past that is it's what what's really what's worth it so um and it's your journey too so don't don't feel so hung up on what other people what you think other people think that's number one because you don't even know if they think that yeah. but you're you know it, you're putting yourself over it and and number two you know if they do say something that makes you feel bad feel it let it out of your system and move on thank you for that mm -hmm. advice Anna. it was very great advice thank you for coming on the show um <laughs> My pleasure. Again, everybody, if you guys want to keep in touch with Anna, you can follow her on Instagram and um, subscribe to her on YouTube. Her page is called Legal Lotus. Um, and that's pretty much all the questions that I had today. Anna, is there any kind of information that you wanted to share with us at all that we maybe didn't yes. cover today? One, one last thing. If you do want to reach out to me, send me an email. Um, <laughs> I will respond, but if it's uh, I, you know, if it doesn't go to my spam, and I do check spam sometimes. I don't really the Instagram I check like every so often, and YouTube usually I check, but that gets filtered, um, not by me by YouTube, and that's not always accurate. So send out an email. I'm sure Alexis, if you don't mind putting that in the show notes, if not, or either way, it's Anna 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 CF at gmail .com. Say that again. Hold on. Let me type it on the screen so that it can be apparent. Why? Okay. What is it? Anna? Yeah, let's do the, the business one is Anna A N N U. It's A A Friend Law, right? Yes, A Friend Law Gmail.com. Yeah, I'm my personal one. Sorry. Let's make this a little smaller. So Anna's email is now up on the screen. A Fern Law. Uh, you can email her there. All right, guys. So sophisticated. Say that again. That it's so sophisticated how you have this software. It's awesome. Yes, I love this software. I tried to go without, but <laughs> no. This I've never done it before. It's cool. Um, when we get off, I can actually share it with you because you could use it for your YouTube videos. It's really, really cool. It's really cool. All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, we will resume in the next two Mondays. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye everyone. Thank you.